Day 42, right? Yeah, crazy. So I guess um, they're going to be... I don't, I don't even know. I guess they're supposed to be allowed to start opening things May 1st here in Vegas. But I don't even know if things are going to open or not. Because, you know, a lot of the casinos aren't going to be able to open... Um, because they don't have enough money and there's not enough uh, going to be enough tourists to keep them flowing. So they're just going to trickle open. So we'll see. But yeah, we're almost to the end now. What is today? The 28th? April 28th. So it's only two more days of April. And then they were supposed to open everything. So I don't even know. I haven't heard if things are going to, if like other businesses are going to open, you know, like some of the ones that got shut down, like little restaurants and convenience stores that weren't allowed to stay open. Some of them were, you know, but I think some places had to close. I don't know um, if they're planning on opening. I know a lot of businesses aren't going to be able to open at all. Like they had to go out of business. So I'm interested to see the next two days, well, you know, um, if I hear about anything and, um, then we'll see May 1st what happens, you guys. So now um, everyone is still, a lot of people are still in this thing of like, oh, we good, we saved everyone's life because this coronavirus was so deadly and da 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 Because it was not a deadly virus. It was a regular flu virus. And we're finding that people have had it since like November of 2019. And they already had an immunity to it. That's why it didn't spread as much as they even thought because a lot of people already had it and then they got over it because they got just a regular flu. It was, And it's not even like a flu where you're uh, throwing up or diarrhea or anything. From what I've heard, it's just, it's respiratory. So it's hard to breathe and you're coughing and uh, in your lungs and stuff. So um, people that have respiratory problems, smokers and stuff, and people with um, heart conditions and very poor immunities, those are the ones that were worried about this particular flu. Now, um, as we see the numbers are coming in, and people, oh, 50,000 or whatever the numbers are today, 60,000, I don't even know what it is today. Oh, there was an article we saw in People Magazine listing off all the celebrities that had died. Right. And they should look that up. But just right, so look they... Look at their pictures. Their yeah, pictures. so they were talking about some of these celebs, and if they were younger, like, there was this gentleman, he, uh, I don't know his name, he is a black rapper, um, I actually don't know who he was, but they were saying he was so, so, and he was younger, in the sense of in his 40s, or something like that, but as I saw from the photo, just the first glance, that I didn't know who the man was, he was very, very overweight, like, in, in, like, the very obese levels, you know, like, a very, very large man, um, and I right away said, well, his weight alone would play a factor if it's a respiratory thing. Because like I said, your weight can put so much pressure on your organs. So if um, he got the coronavirus, his weight could have played a factor um, with any flu or anything because... You don't understand. People think that, like, you can just keep getting heavier and heavier and that's not going to affect you. But it does because everything is working harder as you gain weight. You're putting more pressure on all of your organs, all your joints, on your heart, everything. That's why you see people have heart attacks at the age of 20, 30, 40s when they're overweight. And you're like, oh my goodness, they're so young. But it's so much pressure. So when I look at the photos of people that have died, first thing I look at, are they way overweight? That would be a, a big factor of if this virus could have killed them. Next thing is, what was their immunity? Like, do they already have an illness? Um, next thing, you know, were they close to dying already? Um, and all of the people that are dying, those that's the scenario. You're not seeing some healthy, in shape person dying. Those people are recovering. So that's why this is not a deadly flu virus. This is a virus that comes through that the normal people that die every year. Every year, about 650,000 worldwide die from the flu virus. Every year. And we normally just don't even track it. We're like, someone tracks it, but not like the way we're tracking it now. Like, just the researchers and doctors and stuff track it, but not the mass media. Well, this year, all we're doing is the mass media is tracking it. So, we have the regular numbers, if not less. They're actually saying this is less. So, um, 
Someone said it's Fred the God. Fred the God that died or something. Oh, oh, is that the, the gentleman, the, the the big guy? Oh, I don't know. Um, there was a big, the big. I think he was a rapper or something. He, he's a very large guy. Um, and you can see that he probably had a lot of health conditions already because of his weight. And that does people say don't call people fat and this and that. And, you know, there are beautiful people that are larger. It's not an attractiveness thing. The thing is, as you get larger, you put more weight, you more, um, yeah, more weight, but more t wear and tear on your own body because of your weight uh, it, on everything. You're, that's what you see. Um, I knew a gentleman, he was in his 20s, but he, he was 700 pounds, and he was uh, 26, and uh, he was having knee problems, feet problems, back problems, all this stuff, 26 years old. I haven't seen him in a couple years. I don't know if he's still alive. I mean, he was getting uh, he was getting sicker and sicker. His wife had already died, and she was only 24 because she was just as large as him. Um, and so when you hear if someone did die young, uh, there, was it their weight? Did they have a poor immunity? You got to take it, these things into play when you're hearing this coronavirus. Because the, the truth is the only people that are dying are the people that had health problems already. And the health problem could be the obesity thing. People don't want to take that into account. They go, oh, they're fine. if they're very, very large, then they probably have a lot of health problems already. And that's why I try to help people, you know, because um, it's not about being thin um, just to look good. You know what I mean? People go, oh, I don't care. No, being thin is about feeling good. And when you feel good, you're always going to look better. It's just, it goes hand in hand. It's like, you know how you see someone walking slouchy and looking down and, you know, they're never going to look as good as the person that's standing up and chipper and stuff. So even if this, their body was exactly the same, just the demeanor of being one is depressed, one is alive, then right away someone becomes more attractive. You know, you go, oh, wow, look at that. Whereas a very pretty person, if their head down scowling, yeah, there was a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> did a bong hit before here. <coughs> so, I uh, am still healing from my years of bulimia. So when I do bong hits, um, that's getting all of this crap out of my lungs. And I had... So you guys, I almost died uh, at the age of, oh, it was a 32. Well, I almost died several times. I tried to kill myself a bunch of times. But at the age of 32, I almost died from my bulimia. And, no, and people, you know, I wouldn't have thought I was sick. And, um, I mean, I was, you know, kind of, but not, you know, I didn't look super healthy. Bulimics don't tend to look super healthy towards, if they've been doing it a while, they start to look kind of like they have an eating disorder. But I didn't look like I was going to die. And then right towards the end, I mean, my heart almost gave out. The doctors said I was going to die. I went to go get some tests, and they said, come back immediately. Uh, if you don't, you will probably die, because my levels were so out of whack and everything. And I ignored the doctors and went on a couple more weeks of bulimia until I just, my heart almost gave out. I couldn't, it, I wouldn't be able to get up the stairs when, because we lived on the third floor, so if we went anywhere, when I came home, I wouldn't be able to get up, and Jarvis would help me up the stairs, and then when I got there, I'd have to lay on the couch, because my heart wouldn't be able to... Oh, here you go. I'd be like, oh, I got these. Yeah, let me show them what they are. Oh, they're my favorite. That, okay, so you Describe guys know. What it is. Uh, so I love Gerald Steiner's are my number one favorite mineral water. So we only drink water and mineral waters. Um, and these would be my second. Topo Chico's, they're from Mexico. They're, it's mineral water. And it's just sp uh, sparkling mineral water. So now no uh, flavoring. Remember, I told you, don't be doing the limes and lemon and all that stuff because that's just going to cause you more problems. If you're going to do the mineral water, stick with the no flavors. So I'm going to have a sip of that. These are the best, and they're great because they're like the old school Coca-Cola bottles where you have to use a, a can opener. So you just kind of get that fun vibe, and it's really uh, refreshing. Oh, wait, I'm going to give it right back to you. So. Uh, what? Sorry for the guys hearing the echo in the back room, but I was, I was listening back there in the kitchen. Cool. Sounds very interesting. I'm very, very interested. So, um... I, and I'll get into the meat thing, which I think was the title of the scope, right? <laughs> In a second. Which you guys well, I think mean, it's all related because it's, it's all, all about protein yeah. and health. Right, and so, so those, I highly recommend if, okay, I recommend one of the best things. I always say one of the best. 
Oh, there's, I feel so passionate about so many things that can help you lose weight. So I always say one of the best because um, there's several things that are just great things you can do to help you lose weight. And one would be to cut out the caffeine. No one wants to hear that one. But cut out beverages and only drink water, including caffeine. And you will lose so much weight. If you switch all of the beverages you're drinking right now to water or sparkling water, and if you're like, oh, I get so tired of water, try the sparkling waters because it gives just enough of a, like, difference where you're like, okay, you're drinking your water, you know, your spring water, and then you go, whoo, I get a little, it just feels different because it's nice and refreshing and cold and sparkly and stuff. Stone Cold says his water has fluoride in it, where he's from. Isn't that bad? Yeah, I think some of the, some of the stuff yeah. put fluoride in it. Yeah, isn't that bad so you don't want to drink that, right? Yeah, we don't drink the water here, uh, the tap water. We buy water because the water here is hey, pretty bad. You know what? Some of, okay, they're kind of discussing amongst themselves because they're arguing about something, but about something about Rick Ross. But they're saying, well, where are you getting your knowledge? And, and they say, you don't just get your knowledge out of thin air. Do you? <laughs> you actually do. Um, actually, uh, knowledge is a collective from the whole universe, and any idea comes from a collective of everyone living and dead. So it actually is from thin air. To be exact. No, uh, ideas are not your own. <laughs> Sorry to say, you're not as smart as you think you are. All ideas come from a collective of knowledge of everyone. So that's why you, people get on the same wavelength, because it's not really your idea. It's um, pretty much usually it's the dead people giving ideas to people. That's what you'd call your conscious, your um, people say God, whatever. Uh, it's just dead people speaking to you all day long and giving you ideas. Usually your loved ones, if you want to do that. My mom talks to me all day. All day. <laughs> not like you think. It's not like clear as day where you hear the person. Sometimes, but most of the time it's your own thoughts. But you go, oh, <laughs> I know where that came from. If you've lost a loved one. Um, and I laugh sometimes. I'll start laughing because I know it's a thought from my mom. But you'll experience that if you are open to it. Uh, most people are not open to it because they get scared of like, oh, I don't want to communicate with the dead. Well, you do whether you want to or not. It's just being, the more open you are to it, the better experience it is for them and for you. Because the dead want to still be a part of your life, especially if it's a loved one. That's why I always say um, we need to get over that the dead is the end. And that's why I say it's okay to eat animals. And that's why we eat a lot of meat contrary to vegans i was a vegan for 12 years i was actually a vegan before really anyone was doing it i had to get a book i got my book from barnes and noble remember when everyone used to go to barnes and noble actually i think i may have got mine from borders we'd go to borders and barnes and noble got my vegan um cookbook i'd heard like one uh, person had mentioned it somewhere i heard the term vegan this was in 1995 i was like only 10 years old and i was like I'm going to do that because um, the biggest reason why I wanted to do it back then was to lose weight. I thought that you'd be thin and healthy being vegan, and that's what a lot of people think. But instead, I gained a ton of weight, and then that's when I became bulimic was while I was vegan. But anyway, so right now everyone's on this kick of save the animals, which, of course, no one wants animals to be tortured. No one wants that. I mean, I don't... <laughs> Maybe you can think of one person who's sick in the head that tortures animals, but, you know, the majority of people do not want that. So, um, the way you can avoid that is by choosing organics. Now, you say, what's organics? People get confused because they think organics is the same as vegan or vegetarian. It's actually not at all. Vegan and vegetarian means you don't eat animals. Vegetarian means you don't um, eat animal meat. Vegan means you don't eat consume any animal animal product whatsoever that's the difference so like vegetarians might sometimes still even eat like eggs but they don't eat chicken you know um but now uh, a vegan will not eat eat or consume or have it in their hair products or anything anything that's been used animal products um and that's the difference so if, if people um, but it has nothing to do with organics organics are the food the way it used to be before they started adding hormones, steroids, using a bunch of pesticides, um, uh, uh, genetically modifying everything. 
So it's the way maybe your ancestors ate, that the animals before they started, you know, giving them all this junk to make them bigger. So what they started doing was they started injecting the animals with hormones and steroids to make them larger so that we had more meat. Does that make sense? If you have a larger cow, it's going to provide more meat than a smaller cow. But what we're finding now is if you then ingest the hormones and steroids from the cow that had the hormones and steroids, you're going to get larger. And you're also going to have more health problems than the cow because the amount is going to be more. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the cow, this is the problem with dairy. This is why dairy doesn't work for humans either. Dairy is made for a 1,500, 2,000, I don't even know how big they go, 3,000, how big cows can be these days, um, pound cow. Uh, I don't know what's the biggest cow, but I know they're usually around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. So um, that's perfect nutrition for a cow. It's too much for a human. That's why we have trouble digesting dairy because it's too much protein. It's too much sugar. You say sugar and dairy? Yeah, there's lactose, which is the sugar in dairy, and it's a lot um, for us. It's not a lot for a cow. And then... Um, even the fat is too much for us. So now our mother's milk is the right amount for us because that's for humans. But a cow is too much. So that's why people have trouble digesting milk. Everyone does, whether you realize it or not. Most of your digestive issues are coming from milk and sinus issues. Um, I still have a little bit of sinus issues um, I'm still recovering from, but you guys should have seen me when we, I was still consuming milk. Me and Jai Rich, we were going to um, we were gonna get Jai Rich nose surgery he had the worst uh he was allergic to all, all animals too you can have cats around or dogs he just he it was bad and then we cut out the dairy because i that's how i found out about i started researching what was causing sinus problems and we were taking like so many sinus medicine things you know like the <laughs> clerics or what are they called i don't even know clerics it's not what it's called is it i don't even remember all those ones that you get um and uh Oh, God, they're just terrible taking all that stuff, and it dries you all out, and my antihistamines. And uh, dairy was the thing. As soon as we cut out dairy, his sinuses, it was insane. And we were going to get him nose surgery. It was so bad. The doctor was like, whoa, he had never seen a case so bad. Like, when we took him for the evaluation, he was like, Jesus, dude. And then as soon as we cut the dairy, no problem. So um, the issue with... All the hormones and steroids and the milk and all that is, it's fine for that animal that they gave it to, but it might not be fine for you. So when you then consume that animal that was given the hormone steroids or you're given the, or you're drinking the milk that was for the cow, then for you it's not so good. Um, does that make sense? And also... The hormones and steroids, I don't think, are personally good for the animals either. So that's why with organics, I like that it's not only good for yourself, because everyone's selfish at the end of the day. We look out for ourselves and our family, right? whoever we care about, our loved one. But it also helps the animals. Never thought about the steroids component. Good point. Yeah, no, so people don't realize when you're eating the regular conventional meat, you are now consuming all of the whatever they gave that animal. So if that animal had hormones, steroids, you know, whatever the, the pesticide, whatever the, whatever the, you know, the colorings with the, um, not only the animals, the um, fruits and veggies, they add colorings to make them look pretty because people want to see a red apple or a green apple or this or whatever. They don't want to see these weird that don't because organics tend to not look as pretty because they're more real so sometimes you'll have a huge tomato and the next day might be a tiny one people don't like the inconsistency they want oh they to look the same that's when you go in the produce all the conventional stuff looks the same and they look at the organics like, oh it looks ugly it's funny looking or it's small usually they say it's small yes it's small because it, it wasn't injected with steroids and hormones and they do that to the plants and veggies too Again, that's why you want to do organics. So it's good for all of nature, including yourself. And here's the funny thing. People say, well, organics are very expensive. Yes, they are, because they're real food. 
You're paying for the fact that you are consuming real food and the animals are treated better and you're also treating yourself better. So why not put your money into that priority instead of putting your money into Starbucks and into diet tips and diet uh, things and going to the gym and all this stuff. I'm telling you, when you eat well, you don't even have to go to the gym. We do very light exercise. Um, I, As you guys see, I'm active on here and I walk because we don't have a car. And then I do nunchucks maybe like once a month. <laughs> I'll just bring out the nunchucks. Jet Edwards does them probably like every day. I try to and then I forget to do them. And it, it takes a couple seconds to swing them around. I need to do them more just because they're fun. But that's the level of our exercise. I'll do push-ups once in a blue moon if I get a wild hair. <laughs> I'll do it. usually video it. But I do that like once a month. And... We just stay fit because when you're, um, what happens is when your body is processing so well, everything you do burns fat. So even just sitting on the couch texting, I can sometimes feel I'm burning so much fat where I'm like, geez, I am, feel like I've been working out because your body becomes so efficient that you, whatever you're doing becomes exercise. So no longer do you have to go to the gym. You just have to walk up the stairs. You just got to carry your groceries. You just got to take out the trash. And you'd be like, did my exercise for the day. Feels pretty good. I mean, when we go down to take the trash because we're on the third floor and we come back up, we're like, that felt good. I mean, you feel it. You feel it. It's weird. Um, uh, You just, it's something about when your body is just, just rolling right you do not need a lot of exercise what happens is when you eat wrong you have to overcompensate by just trying to get yourself going that you're having to force yourself you're having to work out a lot to burn any sort of calories because your body's in this constant dormant mode and it's usually because you kept producing insulin Remember, you guys, remember that's what happens with all of the bad foods, the artificial foods, these, um, any of these additives they're putting in there that we don't know the names of. Remember, if you're looking at your ingredients, organics are really cool. Okay, now, be careful. When I say organics, don't just set, look at everything in the store that says organics, all, all the packages. That's not what we're going for. What we're going for is real food. Be very careful because they can mark things as organics if it follows the requirements. Hear me out. Something can technically be considered organic, like an organic bag of potato chips, right? Because, oh, we didn't use pesticides. We didn't use hormones or steroids. Whatever. But it doesn't mean it's real food. Does that make sense? So be careful to not get in the trap of, oh, it's an organic package of cookies. <laughs> but were there cookies I mean, back in the day in the wild? That's what you want to think. It's food from the wild. You couldn't make cookies. No, that wasn't until, you know, now that we can. Unfortunately, cookies are not on the list if you want to be healthy. I know it sucks, but all the good things are off the list. Well, what's funny is once you take those things out of your diet, you won't want them anymore. You only want them when you're still eating them. That's the trick with sugar. Sugar makes you want to have more sugar. It, it shuts off the sensor in your brain that tells you you're full. So once you start eating one cookie, you might as well have the whole box. But if you didn't eat one cookie in the first place, you wouldn't want them. That's the funny thing. Now you say, oh, I, I do, I crave them. It's only because you're eating other sugary things. Does that make sense? While you're eating sugar, you'll want cookies, you'll want cake, you'll want your Starbucks, you want this, anything sugar. Cut out sugar, those things don't sound good at all. Like to me, that does not sound good. All I think of, oh God, I'm gonna get a stomach ache. Like when I think of things like that now, where back in the day, I'd be, mm, you know, you see a commercial, oh geez, mm, Reese's Pieces or something like that. I used to eat, I used to love chocolate and peanut butter was my thing. Now the thought of that, I'm like just imagining the peanut butter going down my throat. I'm like, oh God, because here's another good rule of thumb if you're wondering what to eat. Think of how the thing is going to digest in your body. Think of something like peanut butter, of how sticky and gooey and it is of even getting it down your throat. Well, that has to go all the way down and get down. So it's going to be that way the whole time, just getting gunked on everything. So you want to avoid foods that are that way, and that's what gluten is. Gluten is very gluey. Think of, if you think of gluten, think of glue, because it's things like pastas, breads, dough. It's, it's wheat. 
gluten is of wheat, rye, um, spelt, and oat, I believe, and maybe one other one, is what, it's the protein. They made it from wheat. It's a wheat protein, and or it could be oat, spy, or a couple, a couple of other ones. Anyways, Ryan. But it's, they decided to, they thought this would be a good protein for us. That's what gluten is. If you guys, some people don't know what gluten is. It's just a wheat protein, basically. And they thought in the in the beginning it would be a good source of protein, especially for people like vegans. But they're finding it had so many health problems for people. And then people go, oh, then get gluten free. But you don't understand. This is going to be another problem. What you want to do is avoid things that are gluey like that. The issue isn't just gluten. The issue is anything that they made that is like hard to digest that your body doesn't know what it is that your brain thinks it's sugar that you get um, all kinds of digestive issues from those are the things you want to avoid and those are what everyone wants the breads the pastas um but what we eat is meat leafy greens and garlic that's it um you know you can maybe throw in some more veggies in there if you want and a little bit of fruit but I would avoid any kind of breads or pastas. I'm sorry everyone wants those, but it, it just shouldn't really be in your diet. They really should have never been. They added those because meat is very expensive. So in the, um, I think it was in the 80s, maybe the 70s, they made the food pyramid. I don't remember what year exactly. But it was because meat was expensive, so they recommended people to eat a lot of grains. Remember on the bottom they put huge grains. Remember this, if everyone's my age, I'm 35, and we were told to have a little bit of meat and have the big majority be grains and pastas and la 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 rice and nonsense right and then they later realized that was not right once we realized carbs so then they changed it and whatever but the reason why they first said that is because the grains were cheap and people didn't have money so they said just load up on that and they thought they didn't know it was bad you understand it takes a long time for them to get the research and still now there are a lot of people are not saying it's bad but the research is showing that it is um and the next new thing is still going to have the same problem. You want to stick with food from nature. It's as simple as that. Don't Every new invention of let's make it this way, in 20, 30, 40 years, you're going to see people having issues because what you have to eat is food from nature. That is what will keep you the healthiest, the thinnest, the most active, feeling great. People think we're on drugs because we have so much energy. We smoke weed. We do do that, but that's not a drug. It's actually a plant, and we're finding uh, s- several states now, what, almost uh, 30, I was I heard it 33, is there any more than that? Uh, made it legal, hopefully the federal government soon. So it is no longer becoming, uh, being considered a drug on a lot of levels. So if you're still thinking that way, you need to open up your mind, because I'm not the only one saying this now, you know, um, that we have real medical doctors. I went to a medical doctor because I have a, a medical marijuana card here in Las Vegas. So I went to a medical doctor, um, you know, he was great. And they to get my, I go every year, you got to renew it. So I've had it for three years now. Um, but so if you're still thinking weed is this drug or bad, you really need to open up your mind because they're finding it. It can heal pretty much everything, actually everything. The thing about weed is you don't need to know what's wrong with you. That's the beauty of it. So everything else, you'd have to go to a doctor. You'd have to find out what the issue is and get that proper medicine. Weed heals everything. All you got to do is smoke weed and any of your ailments start to go away. And it's amazing. And I never believed it. I was not a stoner. My sister was a stoner and I did not like weed. I found her to be very irritating growing up I thought she was just so annoying every time she got stoned and I just wanted nothing to do with it I was very Christian and uptight and I then got into alcohol and then cocaine still before I ever wanted anything to do with weed I did so much cocaine but weed oh no thank you no I want anything to do with that I'll, I'll do my cocaine and my alcohol and weed <laughs> And then it took um, until we took a trip to Aspen, Colorado in 2016, and we tried some uh, chocolates and some mints. And we were like, wow. (laughs) And that was, we've never gone back. And then we cut out alcohol. We cut out cocaine. We cut out, um, we now do organics. We cut out gluten. We cut out dairy. We cut out caffeine. Uh, we don't eat anything artificial. All these things, all because of the weed helped us. And it was little by little. Like, at first, we tried to do weed with everything else. 
<laughs> we partied. We did cocaine, weed, and alcohol. And we did that for a while. Um, and this is 2016. And then it was maybe only, I want to say, it was only maybe a month of doing that before we were like, we wanted nothing to do with alcohol. It was like really quickly the weed showed us that alcohol was like not good for us. So we were like, got rid of the alcohol. And then we stuck with the <laughs> weed and coke for a little bit longer. And then we just were like, all we want is weed. It really like healed because like a lot of people go to drugs and alcohol because they're hurting or they're in pain or they, you know, they want to numb themselves. So as you do weed and as you break down your walls, you find you don't need those things uh, that were maybe uh, 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 crutches or uh, security blankets for you, or, you know, where you just, you know, had clung on to that when you didn't feel good. Mine was bulimia, too, was another one for me. That was another thing that I was able to relieve myself of due to weed so also during that time uh during the uh uh alcohol cocaine um weed uh time i was also throwing up which i had st stopped and at the end of 2015 was the first time i stopped believe me that's when i almost died and i uh, stopped for um a good amount of time i don't remember the exact amount of time i didn't throw up and then we started partying and then I started reverting back to throwing up again and so then we were drinking and I would throw up and so then that went on uh, during 2016. So it wasn't until 2017 that I t started <laughs> taking it totally seriously, my bulimia recovery, what we ate and everything and that all was due to the weed because as we uh, smoked weed in 2016, everything just started to just kind of I started to feel better I didn't want to throw up anymore I wanted to find options you know I didn't want to uh, keep doing that because I knew I, I knew I had already almost died um, and so people say how do I know these things during all of uh, so it started from the end of 2015 and then all of 2016 all of 2017 yeah so all of, uh, from the end of 2015 to, so for two and a half years, I scoured the internet every day reading about nutrition and not reading about like what just other people had said, like reading about like the definition of things. What does this do? What is this in our body? What in that? I, that's what I would do because I was sick. Like I would work a little bit, but I was sick a lot of um, 2015 and 16. Uh, and we would party in between, but I would just be sick and sick and sick. And um, I scoured the internet and I read and 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 things that first didn't make sense to me and I tried so many things and we tried this and that and then so now by 2018 we discovered caffeine was the final thing we had to get rid of and so now since from 2018 on we've uh, been just feeling amazing because we cut out the caffeine, we cut out the alcohol, we cut out the cocaine, we cut out the sugar, we cut out the gluten, the dairy, artificial anything, and um, we only drink water. And we've never felt better, like never in my entire life. Because when I was young, I already was starting to eat bad. You know, you uh, people didn't know, so I've never felt the way I felt feel now. And everyone can feel that way. You just got to switch to organics. And I know it's a little bit more expensive at first, but here's the beauty of what happens with organics. So when you first go over, it's going to, like when you start switching, you say, oh, this is so much more expensive and your bill might come to more. But what happens, the longer you eat organics, the less you will eat because they're so satisfying that you will actually end up probably spending less than you were for your regular food because you were probably eating so much more that's what we found out we at first we were like oh it's so expensive because at first we were eating too much and at first you might so it might be expensive at first and like right now maybe you can't afford it so go for regular meat is the other thing if you can't do organics right now go for meat animal meat is what will make you lose weight i'm sorry vegans and vegetarians but if you want to lose weight, you have to eat animal meat. 
it's it's really just as simple as that any other diet you're going to be it's going to be so much more work bottom line like on your body because here's the here's the biggest reason is the amount of sugar so when you eat regular animal protein you have let's say I, I've told this example before but let's say we have seven grams of animal protein of let's say we're eating chicken or I like beef as you all know we're eating some ground beef here and it's got seven grams of protein to like zero grams of carbs or sugar zero over here we have a vegan option that is a, a beyond meat burger right I see this crap all around town um and it has, let's say, I don't know the numbers. I'm, I'm making these ones up, but they're, they're somewhere around here. Where it's got seven grams of protein, so we go, oh, comparable. We got a real burger, seven grams. Beyond meat burger here, seven grams. The problem is with these ones, they usually, if you look at the carbs, are going to be way higher. Like, you'll have three to four grams of carbs or sugar with your seven grams of protein. So, that right there is already now, to your seven grams of protein, you have almost half sugar, or half sugar so over here you had zero sugar so even in your now because what you want to do is you want to eat 60% protein 20% fat 20% carbs but now in your protein category which you thought you ate a burger right which you would have only put in your protein category right if you were to eat a burger and if you said here's a regular animal burger and here's a vegan burger wouldn't everyone say that was my protein for the day right they wouldn't say that was my protein and my sugar when they were eating this one and say I only really got you know I got seven grams of protein but I had so much sugar with it that um, you know it, it, it wasn't really the right balance so let me where then they think they can top sugar on top of that. Then they'll probably even throw in a bun on top of that. Along with their th I'm throwing a bun and a, and a, and a tomato because we're vegans and lettuce, right? Now we have so much sugar to over here. This person ate their, their burger. They ate no bun. That's what I recommend, no bun. Just ate a burger. Just ate a burger. People want to put all these dilly-dallies on there. Just eat a burger. Yeah, your seven grams of protein, no, no carbs, no nothing. Over here, even if we didn't add anything, we still had three grams or four grams of carbs. You see where now every meal tack on. Let's now we had three burgers in the day. We had one, one for breakfast, one for lunch, one for dinner. Now we've had twenty-one grams of carbs. I mean, twenty-one grams of protein, zero grams of carbs. Over here, twenty-one grams of protein to what? What like twelve? grams of sugar or carbs do you see we're tacking on each day now we're still at zero over here now we got 12 grams of sugar just from our protein when we only want 30 grams for the whole day see where that can really quickly um just from that alone you can get a way more high sugar diet on a vegan vegetarian diet but then the other issue is the artificial things your brain thinks is sugar so when you're eating these artificial things that your brain your brain knows what real food is it knows what comes from earth it knows animals it knows the plants and all that stuff it doesn't know all this weird crap we're making like gluten <laughs> And uh, these artificial meats, beyond beef things, and all this stuff. It goes, oh, what is that? So it will just produce a bunch of insulin because it doesn't know what it is. So even though you're thinking you're getting your seven grams of protein, your body's going like, yeah, I'm getting some protein, but I don't know what this is. So I'm just going to produce a bunch of insulin because everything breaks down to sugar. So everything that you eat breaks down to sugar and we live off of sugar, but we only need for survival 30 grams of sugar a day. Any more than that is used to uh, be, get you fat, to feed diseases, to feed candida, to feed cancer, whatever that's excess. Anything over that starts to become harmful to us. Um, so sugar is one of the most potent drugs on the planet because we need it for survival but in large doses it kills us and you say what no it does over time that's why people are dying from sugar illnesses uh things like diabetes cancer diet, so uh can yeah um yes but high protein <laughs> <laughs> not uh, people think balance means uh things like uh, uh adding grains and stuff no i guess it depends what your function is too because 
you're a warrior. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were, let's say, had four or five kids, you might need a different. He might not need as much to be as. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. That's it, what they try to say. Like, it's okay being a little bit like depending on where you're. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends on how thin you want to be. That, that, like, are, but if say, I'm like, saying what say I'm trying to say is, if you're okay. You might not have to do as extreme diet as me, but I'm saying from the start, if you want to lose weight, start eating a bunch of meat and cutting out everything else, and your weight will start dropping drastically. So start there, and you'll be like, whoa. Because eating high-protein yeah. animal 100%. meat is what makes you lose weight. I mean, the Atkins, that's why Atkins works. <laughs> but what happened is... Um, uh, people didn't truly follow the Atkins thing, and then they started making Atkins options, which that didn't work, <laughs> the Atkins bars. If you actually followed the Atkins diet back in the day, that's where people lost a lot of weight. Um, but uh, it's the same principle. The keto is kind of the same principle now. We just kind of uh, repeat the same thing. But it's high protein, low carbs. And that's what you want to do. Now, if you want to do more carbs than me, that's fine. That's what I say. So you can eat your fruits and veggies, but choose your carbs as things from Earth. Now you say, well, everything's from Earth now because they're making it. But I mean, like, before they started messing with it. So, like, the way your ancestors, before we had labs to make food or uh, uh, we could just change the form of the food. So that's another good uh, rule of thumb to think about is if the ch if the actual form of the food has changed too much. So, like... Uh, we were eating almond butter recently. The problem with almond butter is in nature you would not be able to consume the amount of almonds that you can get from like two tablespoons of almond butter. Like you'd have to eat so many almonds um, and they wouldn't be probably that available. So it would be difficult. Now you two spoonfuls and it's like so much fat so many carbs you don't realize and so sometimes the form or when you take all the fruit and put it in a smoothie you now just made it liquid sugar um because it goes right into your bloodstream and you don't now burn any of that fat by digesting and also um you know people go the, the whole fiber thing that if you have like a neutral bullet, they say, oh, if you do it and really quick and then drink it really fast, you still get fiber. Okay, kind of, you get a little bit, but once it sits for like a minute or longer, you already lose that. So if you're ever buying a smoothie um, on the shelf, it has no fiber. All it is is sugar. Because you um, can have it for a second. They say if you blend it really quick, then you can sell fiber. But it doesn't matter. The fiber isn't the only issue because the other issue is you don't use any energy to to digest it so what happens is all those calories all that sugar goes right in your bloodstream and anything that you don't burn off right away gets stored as fat so if you want to eat things that are harder to eat if that makes sense you want to chew them you don't want now not harder to digest see the difference no 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 I remember earlier I said oh have a good workout whoever's going to work out not harder to digest, harder to eat, as in you have to chew more. Like steak, you gotta chew steak, okay? To, but it doesn't, once you get it small enough, you can digest it. Not like the stuff that glues to your system as it goes down. Like the doughy stuff, like bready thing, like donuts and the gooiness and stuff, and things that are gooey. And pastas, they're gooey. Um, I mean, pasta sticks to the wall when it's done. <laughs> They don't want that sticking to your insides. Um, so that's the thing you want to avoid. But having it be hard to eat is a good thing, or hard to make is a really good thing. Having to make your food slows you down big time. You're like, oh, I'm so hungry. Then you got to cook your food. You'll slow down. You'll realize you were not as hungry as you thought you were. We always think we're starving. But very few people are starving in the world. And there are people starving, and that is very unfortunate. But very few people that say they are starving are ever starving. I'm starving. Oh, really? Most people have never experienced starving. Um, but, yeah, the best thing I can say is to eat animal protein. And I know the vegans and vegetarians say, I have some vegans that, like, hate on me because they say, how could you, how dare you encourage people to eat meat? No more animals to be killed. And I'm like... I know that sucks, but here's the thing. Death is a part of life, and I lost a mother, a brother, and tons of grandparents, and a bunch of pets, and all kinds of things. But that death is not the end. And 
you're always eating death, whether you realize it or not, because plants are living, and anything they made in a lab becomes a living organism. So vegans will say, don't eat animals because you're eating death. Well, plants were alive until you ate them, so you just ate death right there, too. It don't matter. Eating death is a part of life. That's where you gain knowledge. People say, where's the knowledge? It is from thin air because it's a collective, and you do gain it when you eat animals. Their protein and nutrients, uh, they are giving them to you, and they don't care. The thing is, why would you want to be on this earth just grazing all day? Thank you, vegans, for keeping me alive so I can graze the grass. Cows want to go to the next dimension and do something different. So these vegans want to save every cow. They're like, God damn vegans. <laughs> I want to go on. I want to sit here and just eat grass. All that is boring. Um, so it's funny. But, yeah, I don't think animals should be treated unfairly. That's why I choose um, organics. Because you can also, uh, uh, places like Whole Foods, they have steps. Step five is the highest level of animal treatment. So you can choose those options. It's really nice. They, you can see on the labels, no cruelty. Uh, you know, they'll say things like no antibiotics, no steroids, no hormones. Um cage free, pasture raised, grass fed, you know, different things they'll say and that can make you feel a lot better and then um, you can, it's always going to be more expensive, yes, because the care for the animals costs more, the food is real food, you want to spend your money on your health and eating right is your health and the reason why people freaked out about this virus is because a lot of people are, unhe are unhealthy right now, so when they hear that it's a respiratory thing or that, you know, um, the unhealthy are dying. People that smoke cigarettes got nervous. People that maybe already have like a, a, some sort of cough or respiratory thing got nervous. And then also people that were very overweight probably got nervous because they already are struggling. Maybe it's hard for them to breathe already. So that is why people freaked out because I think there's a large number of people that might fit into one of those categories, whether they smoke, whether they feel that they're too large right now or they could be affected um, or they have already pre-set uh, conditions where they you know can't breathe you know they're on an oxygen tank or things like this those are the people that were worried and those were the um, some of the ones that were the unhealthiest the ones that died and that was the regular people that would die from the flu virus unfortunately we lose about 50,000 or more a year in the US and about 650,000 or more worldwide every year from the flu virus and it's always the people that are unhealthy and uh, usually the, uh, the elderly is the highest number and the same this time uh, but the unhealthy elderly not your not your fit healthy grandma that you know and some people got it um, Jerry Rich's mother she's 75 if she got the virus I knew she would recover because she is man she's just bounce around she's just that lady just goes 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 and um, she's the sweetest so a lot of people have relatives like that you knew they would be fine it's the ones that were sick that we were worried about, but that's who you would worry about every time a flu virus came around. And some of these people even would die from the common cold if they're sick enough. That's what happens when you're already in the hospital, you're very sick, you can die from the common cold. Um, so we really, we took this regular flu virus and we just blew it so out of proportion and now we're seeing the aftermath is just catastrophic. I mean, so many people are gonna be jobless, homeless. They're already seeing an increase in suicide. Uh, and, and that's going to increase more because right now a lot of people are kind of unaware of what's going on and as soon as like we open up and realize like it's like once we come kind of come out of our shells and see the aftermath of destruction then people are going to get more depressed and so we're going to see an increase in suicide and that is really unfortunate because that did not need to happen this that did not need to happen at all this is all due to a blown out of proportion flu virus. Now, I first started in China. Here's the thing. They're finding that all those numbers were wrong, which we already said China was trying to punk us out because we had just increased 25%, remember, to Chinese imports. They do not like that. Um, uh, so then people would not, not want to buy from China as much. They were pissed off about that, and that really hurt small business here um, in America, too. It was really stupid of Trump because... 
most small businesses buy their products from China, even if they're a, even if they're an American-made company, they're buying supplies from China to then uh, assemble it in America. So that affected a lot of people, and the Chinese were pissed. So they had a regular flu virus, and they just created hysteria, saying that all these people were dying. Well, actually, the numbers came out that they were lying, and this is not for me. You guys go check it out, read about it. They found out that they totally blew the Chinese numbers out of proportion just to scare us, which is what Trump was saying all along. Now I'm not a Trump supporter. I do not vote. I I do not like the Democrats or the Republicans, and I do not um, like our government at all. The way they run it, I think, is absolutely so corrupt and just full of greed. But I will say, I think Trump was right when he called it a hoax from the beginning, and I believe this is a stunt by the Democrats now that what happened, China first did the pump pump fake there, okay? And they punked us out saying, oh, this crazy hoax, everyone's dying. China's back to normal. So if it was so deadly, they are totally back to normal. They're not in any kind of quarantine now. We're the only ones still doing this. So then uh, Trump says, hoax, 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 hoax. The Dems realize, oh, people are starting to believe what China says, and it's looking bad on Trump. Here's our opportunity to take Trump down since we couldn't take him down, so we just tried to impeach him, if you all remember that, too. Remember, right before this thing, we do a 25% increase to China. Uh, Trump bombs Iran. And the Dems tried to impeach him. I think it went impeach and then bomb Iran in that order. But, um, and then we get this Chinese hoax. And the Dems are liking that the media is saying Trump is not doing enough, right? Remember in the beginning, if you guys remember in January and February, everyone was saying, including John Oliver, this dickhead from fucking Europe, um, I hate that we have, what was that? Pierce Morgan, I think his name was, and then John Oliver. These two dickheads come from Europe, but then do the news for the America, and all they do is bash America. I'm like, why are we listening to you when they clearly have a biased thing? They don't like Americans. They're, they're Europeans that don't, and some Europeans like Americans, but these two don't. So um, John Oliver, we were watching his thing. He was nonstop about bashing Trump. Oh, this guy not doing it. You couldn't hear all them doing that. And then the Democrat governors start dumping on it. So first we heard it from John Oliver, that little turd. And then um, the Democratic governors start jumping on the celebs. The celebs are mostly for the Democrats, if you guys know this. Uh, I don't. If you don't know this, wake up. I'll, there are some Republican actors and stuff like that James whatever that nutball they always have on uh, was it South Park or whatever I can't think of his name but he's a nutball Republican but um anyways uh the, a lot of the celebrities are Democrats because they're kind of for <laughs> the wealthy getting wealthier you know they're kind of they just they they act like they're for this community thing Everyone, see, it's so funny. All of them are for greed and for their own things. But they act like, oh, the, we're for the socialism and this and that. And, and But not really. I mean, look at how much the people are really wanting to help each other during this time. Not very much. We do not, people do not. I mean, the celebs, you know what they're doing? Is they're telling us to all stay inside and they're once in a while donating to charity. Charity is the biggest scam in the whole world, you guys. Charity, for one thing, they only usually have to give about 50% of what they make to the actual charity. So, and and sometimes even less than that. So any amount, if you think like most of that's going to the charity, you're out of your mind. Most of it's going to the business, which is a nonprofit, so they don't even pay taxes. So basically, you could sign up, you make yourself a charity, you get half the profits or more, and then everyone thinks, and you give half to whatever thing. But you're just a regular business, and you don't pay taxes. So when celebrities donate to charity, it's just a slap in the face to the actual poor people. Because what they could go do is actually go help some poor people. They have plenty of people contacting them, I'm sure on social media, go help out some of the fans. No, they go donate to charity and make a big hoopla about it and make you think, want to lick their ass because they donate some stupid fucking charity that is just getting richer and richer and richer. And not really helping the people. So the celebs have not been helping. If they want socialism, like they say, that's a... You know, a lot of them, uh, that was Bernie's thing, remember? Bernie Sanders, and a lot of the celebs were jumping on that. I know Sarah Silverman was all for him, and Katy Perry, and... No, Katy Perry, I think, was for Hillary. I don't remember. But anyways. <laughs> um, no, Katy, I think, liked Bernie, too, and then she switched to Hillary, because they had to all switch to it. That's right. But anyways, you guys, so... The thing is, they don't really want that. The rich really just want to do their thing 
and keep staying rich while the rest of us just continue to be slaves and not cry about it. But once something like this happens, then every once in a while people have to step in a little bit. Like the government had to give a little stimulus check. Some people feel all better with their $1,200. makes them feel all warm and comfortable about the government. That is a slap in the face because they just destroyed our economy and are trying to give you $1,500. I don't know what amount. You got 2000 Maybe you got... Um, I mean, oh, everything's all right. Sorry, we just destroyed your livelihood for no reason for a regular flu virus. But here's $1,200. Hope you feel better. You guys, you should be really upset. And I didn't get the money, and I wouldn't want it if they offered it to me. I would go fuck themselves because I don't take government funding. I, and I had the opportunity even when I got out of the Air Force to get disability because I lost half of my hearing in the Air Force. And I said no. Because, I, for one thing, um, I didn't think I deserved it. Just for, like, I think people that actually, you know, I don't know, did more were in longer and, you know, really got injured. Like in, um, you know, you see these Vietnam veterans. I think they deserve disability. I didn't think just because I lost my hearing I deserved disability. But they said they would have given it to me. And uh, I have really bad hearing now. Maybe I should have taken them off on that because it hurts every day. But, um... I'm glad I didn't because I don't want the money from a government that I don't think is doing the right thing. So it's like by taking your money, your their money, you're just encouraging the nonsense. And by voting, you're just encouraging the system. That's why I don't vote. And now you say, well, that doesn't change anything by not. Well, it's better than contribu contributing to the lies and the greed and the stealing and the cheating and all these candidates all like just trample over each other to get to where they are and then they lie cheat and steal and they're all friends we act like hillary so different than trump they all went to the same dinner parties and they're friends and they're hanging out and they're laughing even after the after they said horrible things to each other they were still all cheery with each other you know afterwards and um and then she'll say things about Trump, but they all still go to the same events, you know. Her husband was president, so they still all go to the same president events. If you see, they're all sitting there, all of them, the Bushes, the Clintons, the Obamas, and Trump. So even though they all say they don't like each other, they're all best of pals. Um, so it's all the same group of millionaires and billionaires, most of them are billionaires, uh, except for Trump. <laughs> Apparently, that guy didn't have a squat to piss in. He's just lying to get up there. But anyways, um, now he's got tons of money. He's been lying in his pockets the whole time he's been president and all of his friends. And have his daughter take over his business. Oh, yeah, and then she's his right-hand woman. Um, so here's the thing. I'm not for any of these candidates. That's why I don't vote. But... You guys got to wake up if you think the government is, has your best interests. Because they don't. They have the best interests of their family and their friends. And whoever they've made little side deals with. Not you and your family, unfortunately. And the funny thing I never understood when people chose Trump as president is we knew that Trump did not pay workers. That's his thing. He, he gets projects going and then he just stiffs the contractors. Which, I'm sorry, but my family was in service industry. We didn't have money. We did things like bus driving, truck driving, janitorial, uh, nurses, maids, you know, uh, all the grunt work, construction, laborers, you know what I mean? And that is fucking terrible. If you work for X amount of time, like let's say you did a construction project. My uh, stepdad is a, is a contractor. <laughs> And let's say he did his construction project for two years and then expecting to get some money at the end. Trump pays you nothing and declares bankrupt and, and, and stiffs all the guys. I mean, and then we thought that he would make us rich when he became president. I was like, I don't understand people's logic there. The guy stiffs his own people that build his buildings and build his projects. He doesn't pay the guys that labor over his jobs. He thinks it's great to not pay them. He feels that he won when he got it for cheaper by not paying the workers. Why would we want that as a leader? I don't understand that. But then now we got these Democrats who have now destroyed our economy to become leaders. So I don't know which is worse. You guys, that's why I'm not voting on either of those fuckers, any of them. 
marathon. You guys make your decisions on that, what you want to do. I would say boycott voting because it doesn't matter anyways. They're going to pick who they want. Your vote don't make no difference at this point, you guys. My gosh, if you still believe this is democracy, every year we act like our votes count, and then every year someone cheats. It's such a joke. And then we all, oh, gosh, they cheated. Yeah, every year they cheat. They already know who's going to win, and they figure that out, and they make that work, whatever they got to do. They're doing that now. Do you know how they're cheating this time to start out? By lying to everyone that this is a deadly virus. So they want to destroy the economy. So that's how the Dems are already starting the cheating right now. Um, they told everyone this is a deadly virus and to stay at home and that Trump wasn't doing the right thing and blah, 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 blah. So finally Trump takes big action because he was getting so much shit. Tells everyone now. You're mandatory to stay home, whatever, you know, all these things. And then the Dems take it even further than Trump. So, like, here in Nevada, Governor Sisolak makes us do more days than Trump ever said. Why? For a non-deadly virus that people are recovering? More people have recovered than died. Substantially more. Like, hundreds of thousands in the U.S. have recovered, and only about 50,000 have died. That means it's not a deadly virus. That would mean it would have a good recovery ratio. Deadly would imply that more people were dying than recovering. That would be a deadly virus. Just because people die from a virus does not make it a deadly virus. Do you understand that? Everyone, every year people die from a virus. That doesn't make it a deadly virus. Deadly virus would imply that more people were dying and that if you got it and you were healthy, you just dropped dead. That's not what's happening. Um, so... The Dems jumped on this because they're trying to take down Trump. And you go, well, why would they do that? Why would they destroy the economy and destroy their own economies and their own states just to take down the president? Well, here's the thing. The next president is a very important presidency because there's a good chance a Supreme Court judge is going to die. That Ginsburg uh, judge, she is very unhealthy. She's been um, in and out of cancer remission. They think she's probably going to die, but if not her, probably one of them because they're all getting very old. And the only way you get a new Supreme Court judge is if one dies. Well, if one dies during the next four-year presidency term, that president gets to elect the Supreme Court judge. Well, when you get to elect the Supreme Court judge, that judge is going to be in favor of whatever party you're with. So if you're a Republican, you're going to elect a Supreme Court judge that favors for Republican laws, things that you guys go for, you know, all of the things there. If you're a Democrat, they're going to do that. Well, right now, Congress is a majority Republican. If a Republican president gets to now appoint a Supreme Court judge, they will also be majority of the Supreme Court. Which means, anytime a Republican president wants a bill passed, it will be passed. Because the Supreme Court judge will agree with them, and the Congress will have all those people on his side. There'll be no Dems to say, we won't pass that. Because it'll be majority Republican in the Congress and the Supreme Court. So the Dems are terrified. Because even if uh, then after this, let's say now we have Congress is now a majority Republican and, and um, same as Supreme Court. Now, even now, next term becomes a Democratic president. That president will have no power because everything he tries to get approved, denied, denied by Congress, denied by Supreme Court. Do you see where the Democrats can lose all their power if the next president is a Republican? So they are doing any means to make sure that doesn't happen. They first tried to impeach the president just a couple months ago. That didn't work. Then Trump went gung-ho, started bombing Iran and stuff, and they're like, oh! So then this hoax from, oh, and then he does that, you know, he did that 25% attack, so this hoax from China, so he's got everyone mad at him. Got Iran mad at him, China mad at him because of that 25% attack, Dems mad at him. Um, so everyone is coming at him. So the first the Chinese hoax, then the Dems go, oh, let's jump on that one. That's a good one. Because everyone's believing it. Social media, people went, it went like wildfire. And so it was very easy for the Democratic governors to just go along with what everyone was already believing. They didn't even have to lie to you guys that much because you were already believing the lies. It was like all they had to do is just continue the train that was rolling from China. Uh, China started this hoax uh, virus hysteria deadly thing. It was a regular flu virus, and all they said was, this is so deadly, and they blew out the numbers. The, the, the numbers are, like, astronomically higher than what they really were. 
they're finding that out. You guys can go look it up. And they found out that China lied to us about the numbers of deaths there. So they had this hysteria train, came rolling in. Trump first said, no, this is a hysteria train. No, no, no. The Dems go, oh, people are getting mad at Trump. Here's our opportunity to take him down. So that's what happened. And that's why now um, I'm not for Trump or these Democrats because both of them have not ever had our best interests as a country. Uh, Trump does everything for himself and his friends and his daughter and Putin and whoever is, you know, lying in his pockets. Um, And we already knew that. He works very closely with the Russians. And then uh, the Dems are just doing whatever they can to take out Trump. So they're on, like, this suicide mission. Seriously, I mean, they are destroying their own states to try to grab that Supreme Court judge slot. See, that's why you go, why would they? Because they are like, this is their last-ditch effort. They have to get that Supreme Court judge needs to be a Democrat. Otherwise, the Democrats are going to be hurting for a lot of years. It could be a while before they start to be able to get laws passed again. So that's very important to see. So they are willing to do any means necessary, and that's what they did. So we'll see what happens. Um, Vegas is supposed to open in two days. They're supposed to allow things to reopen. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I heard uh, one of the casinos was planning on opening May 15th. Um, uh, I don't I don't know. A lot of them are not opening at all. Some of them not till August or the end of summer. We'll see about the regular small businesses if they're gonna start opening. I don't I don't know if he's gonna take off the restrictions on May first or if he's still gonna I don't know. Our governor is really not saying anything. I go to his Twitter and it just doesn't say anything. It's like how can you say so many words and not say anything? You know how people write, like and you and you keep rereading it, you're like, you did this what 280 characters or whatever we have on twitter now and you didn't say anything (laughs) you know how like politicians speak it's like blah 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 of like adjectives and things of like it's gonna be better or it's getting worse or it's this and that it's just like but you don't you didn't say anything we're gonna plan a good phase to get out of this thing and i'm looking into win and uh, uh, uh. okay so really you didn't answer the question at all it's like when are we opening well we're we're working with our researchers we're trying to phase in we're looking into this and uh we're trying to get a plan and uh we'll let you know as soon as we can so you wrote that whole sentence or run on sentence of this whole Twitter post that really told us nothing. <laughs> and that's what you see like time and time again from these politicians. They're just writing nothing. And you're like, one thing I can respect about Trump is he sure says stuff online. <laughs> that guy. Man. But um, I'm not a Trump fan either. So, But right now, I'm siding with him over the Democrats for what they've done to our economy. Because this is ridiculous. And Trump only had to take action because they would not stop about harassing him when he was saying, remember in the beginning he kept saying it was a hoax from China. So if you guys want to be mad at anyone, you really should be mad at the Democrats. Like, you should be infuriated with the Democrats right now. And even if you are a Democrat, you should be infuriated with the Democrats. Like I said, I'm not either. I do not vote. I have never voted. So I am not a political party. And <laughs> I would, that would qualify me to be out of it if I've never even taken a stance either way and that's the reason why because I never felt a stance fully either way I've never liked each party enough to choose a president like all of them seem like bad options to me the only person I ever uh liked but I wasn't really in the voting phase during that time I just wasn't paying attention but was Obama but you know even he did they all do their shenanigans but he's been at least the president I like the most out of all these buffoons um but uh, I think everyone, I think he was the most loved president we've had in a while. Um, even if he did, even if you were Republican, <laughs> you still liked everyone. Just kind of liked Obama. I don't know some Republicans didn't, but Trump didn't. Remember, he kept saying he wasn't an American citizen or something, like that, or he wasn't born here or something like that. Um. Um. Anyway, so. I don't know what you should do if you enjoy voting. <laughs> Because I don't think there's a good candidate at all this year. I don't even know who's up in the running for the um, Democrats anymore. I know we got Biden. What a nutball. Unfortunately, he, we had Obama who was cool, but he had a real buffoon for a vice president. So that kind of sucks. 
Um, I didn't realize what a buffoon he was until he started running for president. That guy. What a nutball, but yeah. I don't know, you guys. But this sucks. I'm hoping they um, open Vegas soon. I'm, I'm hoping. I want to start seeing, you know, just the regular businesses open, the ones that can, because that would be cool. But I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted, uh, supposedly in two days. But I'm going to get off here because I need to make breakfast. I need to make some beef. We eat beef burgers for every meal. And it never gets tiring. That's what people think. Food needs to be variety. Food is the one thing that you don't need variety. And that's the funny thing. Where people have that misconstrued. They want to uh, have the rest of their life be routine. Like wake up the same time. Do this and that. But then they're like, oh, I'm going to change up my food. I'm going to eat something different. No, your food actually should stay consistent. Because that's the best for your brain. Then it knows what it is. It knows its nutrition. knows what to do with it. And then you're on your day when every time it's something new it's like what's this oh, especially the artificial stuff like I was saying your brain don't know what it is she says sugar it goes through all these weird cycles because it don't know what's going on when you give it the same thing every day it goes oh good oh good I know what to do with this oh good it's, it's, it's dinner time oh good you know and it's so satisfying and you won't feel hungry so I, I want to help people because even though people look at me and they go oh wow you struggle with me I had eating disorders, so when you're something like bulimic, you eat as much as an obese person would. So I've experienced the overeating to the extreme levels. You know, me and Jack Rich used to love to go to buffets, and we would eat plate after plate after plate after plate after plate. That was our thing, and that's what we would be right there with the obese people, and I was all thin because I would go throw it up, but I was it was the same addiction. It's the same sugar addiction, so I understand what you're going through if you're sitting there and all you think about is food, and you're sitting there right now, and I'm talking about food, and you're hungry. Oh, jeez, now you want to eat. But I'm telling you, if you choose meat options, it'll what will happen is even though you've been eating sugar, so you're going to have sugar withdrawals. So that's unfortunate. You're going to crave sugar for a bit. But the more you keep eating meat, the more you'll get satisfied by the meat. So then you'll crave the sugar less. But you will get the sugar withdrawals because sugar is a drug and you're addicted to it. If you're overweight, you're addicted to sugar in one way or another, whether it be th- you're getting it through the caffeine, so you're getting the blood sugar rise, or uh, you're just eat- eating artificial things, so your body's treating it sugar. But if you're overweight, you are eating, you are consuming too much sugar in one way or another. That's the bottom line. You get overweight by sugar in all different forms. Um, uh, it's not this calorie in, calorie out thing that people think. Um, it's not. Uh, certain foods are just too much sugar. So you can't have 12,000 calories, 12,000 calories, 2,000 calories, 2,000 calories, whatever, you're, 5,000 calories, whatever. You're, some people you, uh, need whatever amount of calories. Um, you can't do that. People always thought it was calories in, calories out, but it's what kind of calories you're doing. So if these are all sugary calories, you're going to gain weight even if you're doing 2,000 calories here versus your protein calories because these ones don't have the sugar. That's the factor of the calorie in, calorie out It's how much sugar. So, yes, calories count, but it's the amount of sugar. So it's not just, oh, you can switch and do. So I have heard someone say you could lose weight by just eating ice cream if it was just because it's calories. I said, no, actually, you cannot because you will actually get really fat from the sugar from the ice cream versus if you were eating the same calorie from meat. You will not look the same whatsoever. You will be fat if you ate the ice cream. You will be super lean if you did the protein without any other exercise if you just did that if you ate all ice cream for your 2,000 calories if you ate all protein and the ice cream is like the extreme example but let's say you were doing you know just one of those vegan options that your body thought was sugar same scenario you will be fatter over here I am telling you try it yourself go one week of eating all vegan options and go one week of doing what I'm saying see which week you feel better do it yourself. Don't listen to me. Try it yourself. Do it right now. We got time. One week, do all vegan, where you'd eat whatever they you would eat as a vegan. I don't know what people do these days. When I did it, I was making things like falafel and veggie burgers and stuff. I don't know. Everything's vegan options now, so I don't know what people are eating as vegan anymore. They're going to Carl's Jr. I heard they got vegan options at Carl's Jr. Crazy. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Anyways, um, try that. See which one makes you feel better. You don't even have to listen to me. Try it yourself, and you'll see. Do the exact calories if you if you can. Figure out 
okay, whatever your 2,000, 1,200, 5,000, I don't know what your personal intake of calories needs to be. And everyone is different. That's why they say everyone needs a certain amount. That's not true. Everyone is different according to your height, your body structure, um, you know, your activity level. Um, so everyone needs a different amount of calorie intake according to those different things, you know, how your body processes it, your metabolism. So you can't just say 2,000 calories for everyone or whatever. You know, they used to say, you know, like 2,000 calories a day was the average. They, but, you know, everyone is different. Some larger people need 5,000 calories a day to even get going or even more than that. Some thinner people, 2,000 calories is too much and it sags them down because it's, like they're they're smaller that would be too much you know so just figure out and don't worry about the number of calories as much unless you're doing the um the experiment that we're doing you know but normally we don't count calories we just eat our animal protein our greens and our garlic and then you don't need to count fat calories nothing like that but in the beginning if you're doing this experiment that's what i'm talking about then you can try that out and do your calorie per calorie yeah, you guys, okay, I'm about to go meet, make meat. <laughs> Can't talk. I'm about to meet. Yes, I am going to make meat. I'm about to go make some organic beef for breakfast, and I will catch you guys all later. Jared, are you out there? I think he's out there. Jared, are you out there? Okay, he's coming. coming. Here he come. He get hungry. I gotta make some food. So I make all homemade food. We do not eat out. We only eat um, food from home. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame, we on top, shout out, shout out, check it out. Check it out.